By the mid-2000s, the CDS market was valued at $45 trillion. That was more than twice the value of the stock market. What happened? Well, during the past decade, the credit default swap market was gradually changing from something of an insurance product to a gambling market. In order to understand what went wrong with the credit default swap market, I'm going to explain it with a very simple example that we all understand, which is insurance. So let's take the case of me. I'm starting my own insurance company and I'm going to issue out these policies that actually are not like insurance, but they're more like credit default swaps. And I'll explain why later on. But anyway, I have a friend. Her name is Katya and she has a house. And she comes to me and she says, I want to buy protection on my house. And I say, of course, what's the protection against? And Katya is convinced that within the next five years, her house is going to be hit by an asteroid. Now, of course, I highly doubt that's true, but Katya just wants to be on the safe side. Now, her house is valued at $5 million. And we work out an agreement where she'll be paying me $200,000 Every year, if her house doesn't get hit by an asteroid, she continues to give me $200,000 for the next five years. What does that mean for me? That means that over the course of five years, I'm going to get a good $1 million. But if the house does get hit by an asteroid, I do have to pay $5 million. Now, I said that this wasn't a, an insurance product. And the reason is because with this, if I'm issuing out what's called a credit default swap, I'm not required to have $5 million on hand just in case Katya's house gets hit by an asteroid. Instead, what I do is I sort of just collect the money from her and I wait because I think that there's not a chance in a million that Katya's house is going to be hit by an asteroid. The same was the case with AIG. AIG and other corporations issued credit default swaps on bonds for Lehman Brothers, which was a relatively stable company. The chances that Lehman would have defaulted on its debt at the time were very, very small. But AIG knew that it could make money off of this deal. So even though it didn't have the reserves, remember these bonds were like, you know, huge. They were like a billion dollars. And AIG didn't have that a billion dollars if Lehman failed. Even so, they still issued out credit default swaps because they thought, hey, Lehman's not going under. So these credit default swaps were very, very popular until, of course, the risk became a possibility. And to better illustrate exactly what happened, let's get back to our situation with Katya. Now, Katya's house, it turns out, it's likely that it's going to get hit by an asteroid. There's some weird astronomic phenomena that's happening and of course I don't see this but some of Katya's neighbors are you know are astronomers and they know that this is gonna happen so what they do is they go to another insurance company and they say that they want to buy credit protection on Katya uh, house protection on Katya's house they don't own Katya's house what they're essentially saying is that we bet you money that Katya's house is going to get hit by an asteroid now this insurance company is like me it's pretty naive and so they're like oh no this is not going to happen I'll just take money from you well I'll charge you a premium so this insurance company it gets premium from three of Katya's neighbors and this continues onwards well the house gets hit by an asteroid the result is that I have to pay five million dollars and I don't have that money and this insurance company which never thought Katya's house would get hit by an asteroid has to pay each of Katya's neighbors you know the full price of the house which is five million dollars the result is this insurance company is even more screwed than I am because this insurance company now has to pay 15 million dollars and it's all because the credit default swap market went from being a regular insurance product to a betting product Similarly, when the credit crisis hit and a lot of banks were being affected, it was clear that Lehman wasn't doing well. And suddenly the possibility that they could default on their debt was becoming more and more likely. So that's when hedge funds started coming in and other, other people started buying in on these credit default swaps. And what they were doing was they were essentially betting that Lehman would go under and default on its debt. So the result was when Lehman did go under in 2008, not only did the person who issued, who got the bond out from Lehman, who was owed that money, 
need money from AIG, but also these guys who were from the hedge funds. They needed money from whoever issued out the credit default swap to them in the first place. So we see this entire parallel situation emerging. So what do AIG and me have in common? Well, we're both stupid and greedy. Both of us sold risk protection on things that we never thought would happen. And in the end, when they did happen, we were both stupid because we'd never had the cash reserves or the money to pay for that risk in the first place. For me, when Katya's house got hit by an asteroid, I ended up owing $5 million. For AIG, when Lehman Brothers went under and a bunch of other places in the market went under, they ended up owing about $400 billion. That was money they didn't have. That's why in September 2008, they needed emergency money from the Federal Reserve. And right now, the government's trying to fix AIG up as much as they can. To review, credit default swaps were covering risk that was not supposed to happen. The subprime mortgage crisis suddenly made that risk more of a possibility. Hedge funds began betting on whether corporations would default using credit default swaps in a very bad way. When everything collapsed, the companies that issued credit default swaps did not have the money to cover the losses they said they would. Coming up in Act 4, understanding aspects of our bailout. Thanks for watching. To learn more or watch more podcasts, visit www.subprimethemusical.wordpress.com.